What's up YouTube? This is my 2009 GMC Sierra Duramax with the Allison 1000 six-speed transmission. With a Magna transfer case. This has been a long process for me. I uh, had a problem with my transfer case skipping a tooth in the clutch to the planetary. As you drive down the road, you feel this real bad clunking, and uh, it would get worse the more you got on the gas and uh, come to find out it happened to be the transfer case at first I thought it was the rear end but it wasn't the rear end it was the transfer case so if you out there have the same situation where your transfer case well if you're feeling a clunking as you're driving down the road most likely the same situation I've had seen a few videos or people reporting it that uh, they have felt the same situation and didn't know what a fix was other than buying a whole new transfer case. Well, me, I like to be difficult. I like to investigate things and see why things happen and see if there's any way of improving it. And I found a way to do it. Like I said, this has been a long process. I've been working on this since November of last year. And um, finding information to do this was uh, quite difficult, to say the least. So that's why I'm putting this video together for you to uh, um, do this yourself if you feel so inclined. And if you feel like doing it, I'll list all the part numbers that you need to do this. Now this is a uh, Magma transfer case. It's an NQF. They have NQG, NQH, NPO. There's a bunch of different kinds. Um, but uh, this is the one that was in my truck. Now the case number, as you can see it here, is a 2424729. This is a um, what GM calls a first design transfer case. And it only came in a first design transfer case. There is a second design out there, which is an updated version of this transfer case which is what they say is uh, a more robust transfer, transfer case and uh, is what they currently run today. This one here um, originally came with a five pinion planetary gear. You can see that there. And what happened <coughs> with this one is the skipping that was coming from it was this clutch this is called the clutch now I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up focus 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 eh, it's not going to focus well anyways the teeth if you look at them they are uh, kind of tapered and that's what's giving you your clunk um, I don't know why this one failed on mine, but I do know that this was bad, and because this was bad, the input shaft, which is this right here, this is the input shaft. I reassembled this. I could take this apart real quick. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. So basically, I'm recording this on my phone. My uh, GoPro wasn't charged and I'm kind of excited about what's going on so I didn't feel like uh, waiting for it to charge so here we go um, just basically you pop the snap ring off throw that off to the side and this whole thing comes out and that's your input shaft now you can't really see it through this camera but you can see there's a taper to the splines in there you see that let me point it out a little better set that there like that where's that lighting there we go and you can see the teeth 
See how it's skinny on this side and it's thicker back there? That taper causes the, the clutch gear, that's what this is called, it's called a clutch, causes it to slip out and that's where you're getting that clunking sound. Okay, this goes in here like that. And as, as you're driving down the road, when it's under load, it ramps up and it'll click. And it'll click. Now, this is all held into place. This is all held into place by the shift fork, which is on this. And if you look at this one, you see it's kind of wiped out. There's not much left of it. Now, this is the second time I did it. Like I said, I've had this problem since no November of last year while visiting a friend out in North Carolina. And uh, I kind of band-aided it together so I can get back home. I live in Michigan. So um, this was the second fork that I bought. This is the first one that was originally in the truck, and you can see that one's pretty well toast. And at the time, I didn't know why it was doing what it was doing. I just saw that this was wore out, and I bought another one. Along with that, the pump, this is the pump that's inside there. This was trashed. I, I mean, you can see it's, uh, it's all coming apart. It's just, yeah, it's garbage. So the pump failed. There's a, supposed to be a tab right here. That tab broke off. That sits in the, uh, the case itself. And uh, you can see that right here. This is what the tab's supposed to look like. I have already assembled this back in uh, November with the new pump. So this is the new pump. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this fork off. I got a new one. Then we'll put a new fork on it. Um, clean all the parts up really good and uh, start assembling this back together but there was a uh, there's a TBS or TSB I'm sorry TSB on this uh, transfer case which led me down this crazy rabbit hole uh, to uh, update the transfer case to a more robust transfer case as they say and it's um, basically um, the planetary gear is no longer a five pinion planetary gear or five planets however you want to say it. it's a five pinion planetary gear in the original first design the second design that this didn't even come in is a six pinion planetary okay in which um, there's some call outs on the uh, TSB that says that uh, serviceable parts can be uh, uh, changed to a second design and the reason why I want to change this out um, there's nothing really all that wrong with it as far as wear goes but if you look here see how black that is this pinion here um, it's got a hard spot in it so it, it I just not comfortable putting it back in there I loosened it up as much as I could got it flowing a little bit but it, it, it's just not right so and according to the TSB, these parts are no longer available. This and this in particular are no longer available. Now I have found some um, places on the, the interwebs that uh, sell these parts as an aftermarket item or, or I don't know if it's aftermarket market for sure or whatever the case may be. It's uh, it's not OEM to say and uh, I just didn't want to do that I wanted to update it to a more modern robust transfer case so that's what we're gonna do today so stay tuned and I'll show you the difference between the two and uh, we'll go from there Okay, here we go. This is a technical service bulletin. A service bulletin, you can see it there. There's the number that it calls out for. And you can see what it says here. Transfer case identification, first design versus second design. And there's all the listed vehicles that have the um, uh, different designs, per se. And you can see 
RPOs, NQF, NQG, NQH, and NPO or NPO. Um, and this is a second revision of the service bulletin. The first revision was an A, a 421A. This is a 421001B. So they even revised the original TSB. And you go into the TSB and it talks about um, the output shaft on the first page for the transfer case, which is not any concern of ours. There it is again. Um, we'll get to it here. Just hold on tight. Uh, I need a better table. There we go. So, it talks about the shift fork um, design change in the NQG. And then here's uh, the actual uh, clutch. It talks about this. And I haven't found anything correlating to the different ring size here, um, where the outside is larger than the inside. Uh, the new clutch that I got. Uh, they're both the same size. They are larger than the original, but this diameter here is actually smaller than the old old design. So, uh, yeah, there was some interesting things there. And it talks about how many teeth the old one has and versus the new one. It talks about uh, um, front case half assembly, input shaft, planetary carrier, and low clutch is what you need to change to. Um, to the new design, uh, the second design. And they call out part numbers and they give you parts breakdown. This is for a half ton, as you can see, it's only got a three three uh, pinion planetary. <clears throat> and again, the half ton. Um, we get to a page 11, if I can get these stupid pages to work. I believe it's page 11. And there's the call outs for the half ton. Yeah, there we go, page 11. This is uh, my transfer case. As you can see, it's got the five pinion planetary. And it says here, uh, let's focus, focus. There we go. Transfer case assemblies were only produced with first design content. Service 2007 to 2010, my heavy duty. NQG transfer case service assemblies may contain either first or second design. The NQG, was, which is actually the manual transfer case in my research, um, it's not an electronic shift like this one is. There's the motor, you know, see electric. Um, the manual shift had second design components or first design components. It was either or. Why they do that, you know, it's just a GM thing, I guess. I don't know. But. It's been a pain working through this. And um, they talk about, uh, you know, the assemblies and the different part numbers. And this is for the NQF, the NQG, and NQH first design part numbers. Okay, and like I said, the uh, input shaft and uh, the case half and all this crazy stuff is no longer available as per GM. Now you might find them aftermarket, and if that's if you're so inclined to do it that way, that's fine. This is about updating your transfer case to a six pinion planetary with the newer parts. And here's a picture of the six pinion planetary. As you can see, it's quite different looking. Uh, all the parts they call out, and these are the parts. Some of the parts now don't review this video as those are the parts to get I had other parts that I needed to get so uh, I'll have a complete description of all the parts that you need providing that you have nothing else wrong with your transfer case and then you're on your own because I'm not about that I'm, I'm about um, converting this to uh, the updated design and uh, it talks about uh, the gear size <clears throat> that's pressed in the front case half it's not a serviceable part, so if you're going to do this, you have to buy a new case half. Okay, and it talks about the 
um, the input shaft from the transmission and yada 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 different planetary gears anyways that's that so now that we've got that out of the way I went to a uh, dealership and uh, I don't know I spent probably two hours with the uh, parts guy there trying to figure out all the actual parts that I need to do this conversion and uh, he gave me a list and of course that list was um, incorrect to say the least I bought parts that I can't use so and those are right here brand new here's the input shaft and you can see here I'll show you that this input shaft versus the old input shaft or the original I'll show you the difference between the two first off you'll notice that this input shaft is it doesn't fit in the planetary so that's not going to work the second thing you'll notice is the the input itself I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up but the input itself is uh, that fit on there? No, that won't fit on there. The, the input shaft here coming out of the transmission to this on this shaft which calls out for this case half is quite a bit larger and this is I am I'm, I'm assuming for the LML I have an LMM um, see it's brand new still in the box see here there's the bearing that it goes into and this is uh, my uh, input shaft and you can see and I'll wait to see it, but it doesn't fit in there it's it's smaller the one that came with this case well it didn't come with this case you have to order it separately but this one you can see it fits perfectly in there so this is for an LML my guess LML and probably L5P I'm not sure about that don't quote me on it but uh, yeah can't use it it's not I have no use for it it won't, won't match up with the transmission and I'm not changing the output shaft on my transmission to make that work so that's a scrapped idea there so anybody who's interested in this case um, it'll be up for sale and uh, You can know that it's all brand new. So that's that one. Put that away. All right. So, and that is an NQF case half. Like my uh, my transfer case is an NQF. But my transfer case is an 07 to 10. Or 11. Uh, I forget what it is. Uh, 13. Yeah, I think it's 13. Yeah. 07 to 13. Okay. Um, so, when sourcing these parts, this uh, case half says it's good for a 11. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Uh. uh yeah, it's right here. It says that it's good for a uh, 11 to 13. Uh, actually, it's this one right here. Nope. Right. Here it is. NQF. 11 to 13. NQF. And that's the part number that they suggested I get. Well, that's not the right one. So anyways, after more digging, more searching, I got this puppy here this is the right one and this has got all the right parts that i need i got uh, <clears throat> the new fork as you can see it there oh incidentally on this fork to change out this fork there's a uh you, you can see see that pin right there I don't know how well this light's picking it up. That pin right there that rides in there, 
has to be knocked out. Now the back side of that pin, if you look in here, on the replacement pin, uh, come on, light. Uh, let me get some light here. Oh, well, there you go. You can see it there. There's a, there's an Allen screw in there now. Before this is pressed into the shaft, and what you do is from this side where it's pressed in, you knock it out. You just take a punch, knock it out, and then you buy the replacement pin, which comes threaded and comes with the set screw. So, yeah, you need to you need to take that out and change that. <clears throat> So that that was uh, the first hurdle, figuring that out. Um, so yeah, we got that. And then of course I had to put the new pump in mine. I don't know if yours your pump is good. You know, no need of taking it apart or nothing like that. It's a good time to change all the bearings. I got new bearings. Uh, here's the new bearing. This is uh, this goes into the tail shaft housing you can recognize it by this groove okay and that you have to uh, use a special snap ring pliers in here which are these ones and I happen to get these off of a Mac truck Mac tools it's got these weird uh, jaws on them it's the only thing I found that would work putting it in there and opening up that snap ring so yeah shout out to Mac tools for uh, a great tool love it works great so once you uh, take all your bolts out you separate the halves you, 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 sep you separate the halves okay hold on you separate the halves and all these parts are in there I mean, they just kind of kind of fall out but if you're taking it apart and you're gone that far <clears throat> you should know how that goes together I'm not going to show you just remember don't forget to put this guy in there that could be bad but anyways uh, let's get to uh, putting this together with the new parts oh by the way when I uh, drained the fluid out, it was quite silvery. Uh, it, uh, it had a metallic look to it. Um, it was burnt, stunk. It was uh, not in the greatest of shape, to say the least. And when I opened it up, these are the parts that came out of it. And these are, you know, they're similar to the original parts that I pulled out of it the first time I opened it out. Um, there was a lot of metal shavings in there. There was, you know, the part for the pump that was laying down in there. It was all in the pickup tube, and you know, it was just, it was just a mess. So I cleaned it already once, and, uh, and of course I had to clean it again. While I was in here, I figured I changed the bushing on the tail housing because this one looks kind of rough. It looks war. It's got some scrapes and, you know, it's war. But if you look at this, you can see, the easiest way to get this out, you can see there's like a puzzle piece to it. See it? Oh, while well, that camera's picking it up. You find that seam and you just fold it in and you take it out. And then I used a uh, ball joint tool to press the new one in, just pound it in basically. It's a steel bushing. Um, I don't know if it, it's a, uh, necessary to line things up like you should i don't know if there's alignment on there or not but i looked at the one before i took it out carefully and uh just put the this one in exactly the same way that uh, this one came out at so the, the position that this was in there you know rotation the rotation that's what i did so it can, that's how it was in there. I imagine that's the way it's supposed to go. So, yeah. Putting a new seal in. Yeah, lots of new parts. Oh, before we get too far ahead, there was another thing that 
uh, cause that case not to work. I thought maybe I can find a, uh, an input bearing that was uh, the right diameter for the new input shaft and that's non-existent so I that was gone that idea was gone the other thing the other thing I found is um, I didn't notice it at first I just kind of slapped it together and was in a hurry to get it put back to get my truck back on the road and like I said it's been down since November but the case half if you look here for both of you uh, Canadian and American people you can see there it's uh, the size of it now on the, this NQF case it's about a quarter inch bigger three-eighths of an inch bigger in in that dimension from here to here so it's about that much longer and all the parts inside wouldn't line up so that was another reason why that case is no good so if you're thinking you can grab a transfer case out of a LML and throw it in your LMM, I doubt it's going to work because the case itself is longer and you're going to come into clearance issues um, somewhere. It's almost a certainty. So yeah, don't go that route. Besides that, the input shaft won't match up with uh, the Allison transmission on the output shaft. So that's that. Okay, the reason you have to replace this case is like I showed you in the TSB, is this ring gear is non-serviceable. It's pressed into the case. It does have a snap ring, as you can see. There's a snap ring in there, um, probably just to keep it from sliding out, but it is knurled. This gear is knurled, and it is pressed into this case, and it, it doesn't come out. It's not a good thing. Besides that, the outside diameter of this ring is actually larger than the new one so even if you were to get it out and try to swap it it won't work anyhow because the case is machine too large for the gear itself so i wouldn't try that uh not 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 the route to go but i'll show you here with all the new parts oh that's pretty heavy you can see the six planetary right there i already assembled it uh, there's some washers in there that you have to buy and uh, you have to buy a new, um, uh, new well you don't have to buy this snap ring this one here anyhow but you do have to get um, you have to get this this bush this uh, washer this snap ring there's a thrust washer on the inside of that I should I probably should have showed you that on the other one and there's also a thrust washer inside here so there's uh, a few parts that you have to buy. But you can see here, I'll show you, that it, it doesn't fit. You can see that's uh, no bueno, as they say. So that's not going to work in that case. Now on to the new case. This is a new case half. And this case half is not, I repeat, is not an NQF case half. This is an NQH case half. Now some of you might say, well you can't mix and match parts like that, but I look at it this way. If it works, don't fix it. But you can see here that this fits in there perfectly. Of course it's backwards. This, this shaft would go through the bearing on the other side, but you can see the gears mesh up perfect. Okay. And also, this input shaft is not um, listed uh, on an MW7, which is an Allison transmission. This is an M MYD, I believe, transmission, which is uh, GM's um, transmission. It's the gasser transmission. But the shaft and all the parts to it, this race for the bearing, all fit this new case so again this this shaft here is for, is uh, actually for a um, NQH case like this case an NQH but it's not for the Allison transmission although it does match up perfectly I, uh, I measured the splines I counted the splines 
and I also put it on the transmission itself to make sure that it fits and it does it's a perfect fit it's a perfect match so they say it can be done according to the TSB and obviously with all the parts that I have now it can be done I just wish GM and their wealth of knowledge would have um, just give a call out on the parts they say if you got an NQF transfer case you need this part this part this part this part and call out the part numbers that you need instead of just calling out the parts like you need a new case half new new planetary didn't say anything about the, um, the thrust washer or the retaining washer or the snap ring um, they tell you you need a new input shaft and uh, you need a new clutch and you can see on this clutch how straight those teeth are versus the other one yeah, the other one was quite wiped out and that's why it would clunk my guess is under load it would skip a tooth it would skip a tooth and um, this poor guy did the best it could to keep it in in position but you can see it just wasn't enough you see how hot that thing got it's all burnt yeah that's 700 miles of abuse yeah that was uh, didn't last long but it got me home that's that was the main point in that so we'll put it all together and oh incidentally this case is actually heavier um, weight wise uh, than the other one and uh, doing more research um, I have to believe that this case here is actually aluminum whereas uh, this case the one that came out of the truck is magnesium this thing weighs nothing you can pick it up with one finger I mean, it's light as a feather this one here you better get some fingers on it because it's it's got some weight to it now I have seen reports where this case will crack in some vehicles um, due to uh, out of balance drive shafts I and mean, there's a myriad of things that could cause it to crack but being aluminum it's much stronger than the magnesium uh, although this is still magnesium I probably should have went the extra mile and bought uh, the new um, rear half um, for the transfer case because the rear half the new ones that I from what I understand are are either magnesium or aluminum and there is there are companies out there that make them that are um, aluminum so it would be quite a bit stronger the whole the whole transfer case would be quite a bit stronger now this truck has um, roughly 155,000 miles on it but you can see there's like zero zero wear on this thing it's like why it failed it, it's still I, I still don't know you can see all the teeth are in perfect shape the chain is perfect there's no flex in the chain so it it was definitely I mean you could still see the machining lines when they cut these gears so it, it was hardly ever used in four-wheel drive so why it failed who knows it could have been anything it could have just been a defective part and it most likely was this pump may have been cracked from the factory or I don't know I don't know what it is but that's neither here nor there I'm fixing it now and it's going to be an updated version supposedly stronger one thing I will say about this new case is uh, being that it's aluminum I don't know if the molds are different uh, it's quite a bit rougher than uh, the original case um, you can see uh, there's a lot of jagged parts in here um, you can see it's just I don't know if it was near the end of the casting life of the die or if they use the die if they use sand I don't I don't know exactly how they uh, founder this stuff but uh, yeah I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff some of these rough edges I just don't like them I don't want them falling off in there and getting into the bearings and so I'm gonna clean that up before we assemble okay well uh, despite all my efforts to recover the video of me reassembling my transfer case uh, those video those uh, files those videos are uh, lost and gone forever but 
a um, couple updates on uh, on that new case half wasn't actually um, how do you say an exact fit it uh, wasn't a perfect fit it had some things that are notable about them uh, mainly if you look here this right here which is on the outside also this nut there's a there's a plunger in there and uh, that plunger works to uh, give a positive stop for the motor the electric motor to know exactly um, what positions it's in for high too high for low or neutral um, the NQH case that I got didn't have that didn't have that at all there was no no spot for that if you look in the video if you back it up you'll see that this case or the NQH case um, doesn't have this rise up here it just comes across like that and then continues this radius here so I had to fabricate um, some parts and bolt them to the case you know I use my fancy dancy little uh, mill machined up some parts and uh, got that case to work now the proof of that is uh, here's my transfer case you can see it's in the truck now um, and uh, see that little block right there yeah this block right here this is what I manufactured normally there would be a, uh, a bung on the case right here that would come out and that nut would thread in there and the spring and the detent would be inside that so I had to make all this and I bolted it to the case and you can see there's a bolt here because there's two parts to this there's another one just like this on the inside of the case that's laying this way you know traversing this to uh, give support to the plunger so it doesn't rock over as uh, as that uh, gear selector is uh, turning by the the electric motor right there so there was some uh, modifications I had to do to that case or this case to get it to work um, but as you can see I got it to work and it's in the truck and uh, yeah so uh, I'm really bummed that uh, I lost all that video and of course I'm not gonna I gotta tear this all apart just to show you so I have to take my word for it that it it, it can be done with some ingenuity and some know-how um, this is not your uh, average DIYer project but uh, yeah I got it done got her back in trucks on the road and everything works thanks for watching